live and local. Starring Andrew McGinnis. David Petron, Michael Turner, Jared Moss, Gabe Warwick, Brooke Merchant. Live from was not actually live, only live during shooting. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Live and Local, where we're local, but not really live. I'm this week's host, Andrew McGinnis, and our other hosts are behind the cameras, helping me put on the show. Today, we will be diving deep into the world of coffee, not Starbucks or other chains, but the culture that small roasters have created, and what impact that has had on Hayes. I'll be joined by a local connoisseur, a local legend in the music scene, and take a deeper look at Hayes' lone coffee shop to give you a taste of the caffeinated world. Our first guest of the day is Isaac Hecker, a genius when it comes to the juice that keeps us going. So Isaac, how you been, man? It's nice, uh, nice joining you, or nice having you on the show. Thank you very much for being here. How you been? Good, been good. Thanks for having me. Uh, just had the kid. Kid's seven months old now, so. Holy cow. Just being a dad. So it's like a new, it's like a new world for you now with the yeah. kid in the house. Pretty yeah. much. Yeah. Well, as I said, uh, we're diving into the world of coffee. Um, so what exactly is like a coffee culture? What would what, what that be? Um, well, as, as with any sort of, uh, I don't know, thing that you could be into, whether it be like music or skateboarding or uh, hobby, I guess, you know, they all have their own culture surrounding it. And coffee certainly has uh, its own. And uh, it can get kind of nerdy and geeky with people getting into um, the chemistry of coffee and the chemistry of water and how, you know, Temp different temperatures and the different uh, mineral makeups of waters will affect coffee. And then there's the coffee itself and all different processes um, that it takes uh, to uh, get it from its bean to the cup to you. And so people get, you know, as nerdy as they want into that. And then you have, you know, less nerdy enthusiasts um, who just want something that tastes really good and they do whatever they can to chase that. and. Uh, so yeah, I mean, there's room for lots of people in the culture. It's a really inclusive culture and um, a lot of fun. People try not to take it too seriously. Right. So kind of finding a common ground in there somewhere where you can yeah. where you can mix and match your beliefs with somebody else's, or not necessarily beliefs, but what you're interested in with yeah. uh, what they're interested in. Awesome, man. Yeah. Um, so looking at that and taking it more to a local level, um, what what do you think has changed within the last like five to ten years here in Hayes for the coffee scene? Uh, not much, but there's been some, I guess, progress. Um, if you're into coffee like me and um, you love exploring new coffees and uh, trying different things, there have been um, a few places that have, or a couple, I guess, um, that have popped up and um, have allowed people to explore that. So Breathe Coffee House being one of those um, that uh, you know, your dad opened and I was lucky enough to help uh, be a part of that from its early, early-ish stages. Um, and having places like that um, that allow people to just experience how different coffee can be. Um, <coughs> that doesn't have to be your grandparents' instant and doesn't have to be McDonald's or Starbucks. Um, I think is great. Um, it's really similar. I think coffee culture is really similar to beer culture in that um, you have a, a lot of this. I know they feel very similar. I'm also into craft, craft beer, beer, you know, yeah. typical white guy with a beer, <laughs> coffee and beer, that's my thing. So, um, but I think that they're really similar and like with, you know, beer and, and coffee and haze, there just have been more, um, opportunities for people to get something different other than just the standard, what they've grown up with. Um, and so having a place like Bree, there was a guy roasting his own coffee here in Hayes for a while. That was great just to have somebody roasting it here. There's, mm -hmm. as far as I know, nobody in Hayes that's actually roasting coffee. Um, I think the closest place is like Salina or maybe Hillsboro. There's a guy up there doing a little right. bit. Uh, 
But it's changed just in that uh, we've had a couple places open up um, that have tried to put a focus on, on quality coffee rather than quantity of coffee. Yeah, and I, I mean, I would completely agree. I remember uh, there was Similinos and there was also mm -hmm. Coffee Rules, which both of those, uh, I don't know why they had to shut down, but they did um, shut down after a little bit of a run. But uh, and you kind of answered my next question of why coffee makes sense in Hayes, and I would completely agree that with uh, the beer culture in Hayes, trying new things and actually branching out instead of like, like you said, like a Starbucks or your Folgers or in the beer equivalent of like a Coors and a Bud Light, that they're actually willing to try, you know, your craft beer or your craft uh, coffee. Instead. Yeah, yeah, I think coffee makes sense anywhere. Obviously, Hayes, you know, isn't immune to that, but you know, we have a a culture that tends to gather around food and drink, and coffee is definitely one of the drinks that people gather around and so it's just a, a it's a hub hot coffee shops are are hubs and places for people to uh, get together and interact and just be with each other uh, i think coffee is best enjoyed when shared with someone and having a place like breed that feels very inviting and warm um, i think is is great no and i would i would completely agree so i only have a couple more questions for you um so First one would be like, what exciting things are happening at a, like a local or regional level for coffee? So whether that just be in Hayes or whether that be in the whole Kansas uh, region? Well, one area that I really love is Kansas City. Um, my in-laws live up there, so my wife and I go and visit often. Uh, but Kansas City is just a booming coffee city. Lots of really great roasters, lots of great multi-roaster shops, people who aren't roasting their own coffee, but sourcing coffees from multiple roasters. Mm -hmm and really exploring the coffees on different types of equipment and um, different environments and aesthetics inside of their shops and exploring all the differences there uh, is really, really great. And Kansas City is probably one of my favorite places to go and visit and explore different coffee shops. And so that place is always really exciting to me. There's it seems like there's a new shop opening up, you know, like every other month, which is great. As far as Hayes goes, um, having a place like Breathe that uh, has an emphasis on um, community, I think is great. Uh, having a, I think that's really exciting, having a place that is less focused on making a buck and more focused on trying to engage with the community and give back in ways that it can uh, and just try to be a positive force, a positive place in the community right. is really exciting. Well, and I also feel like as far as coffee goes and the way to approach it is it's definitely regional like we were discussing. Like Hayes, I feel like, is a very community-centered place. So Breathe makes sense, and Kansas City is more outgoing and is more willing to try new things. So uh, my, my last question to you would be, why is coffee so important to you? Why is coffee so important to me? Uh, that's a hard question. You know, I started drinking or exploring coffee for a really practical reason, I just was trying to cut some sugar out of my diet. And at the time I was drinking coffee often with lots of cream and sugar in it. I knew that there were people in the world that existed that drank coffee black and still enjoyed it just fine. And so I just was like, well, what are they doing that I'm not? And maybe I should try and do those things. And it just kind of went from there. And then I remember having my first cup of coffee that was brewed in a French press. And it wasn't the best cup of coffee ever, but it just was different. It was right. eye-opening and showing me that coffee can be so, so different. And I think um, another big experience that I had was getting my first cup of coffee with latte art in it and how much fun that was for me. And I started exploring coffee and wanting to do it as a career potentially and helping open breathe was because I had such a good experience in coffee and I wanted to let other people also have that experience. I wanted to provide an opportunity to them for ha to have that experience and feel the way I felt when right. I tasted something that was, you know, just unbelievably good, had this drink that looked unbelievably beautiful, uh, and being able to be a part of Breathe early on and be one of the first places in Hayes to pour latte art was so much fun right. to have people, even, even if it wasn't good, just to be like, did you do this on purpose? Right, you making know? that hard or something. Yeah. yeah, that was a lot of fun and something that I miss a lot now that I don't work at right. work at Breathe anymore. So. Well, thank you very much, Isaac. It, uh, it means a lot that you uh, took some time out of your day to come out here and be with us. Um, 
And what you've done for the coffee scene in Hayes America has actually been incredible, so we, we thank you for that. Thanks. Thank you very much, man. All right, we're going to take a quick commercial break, um, but when we come back, we'll get an inside look of the local coffee shop, Breathe Coffee House. So stick around. We'll be right back. It takes less than one minute to find out if you may have prediabetes, and you can do it here. So what are you waiting for? Just go to the site. Find out how to use an awkward silence to help a friend with their mental health at SeizeTheAwkward.org. Welcome back to Live and Local. If you're just now joining us, we're diving deep into the world of coffee and what the culture looks like, specifically in Hayes. Recently, I had the chance to head on over to 7th and Main to get a closer look at Breathe Coffee House. And I do have some relation to the business, seeing that my dad, Patrick McGinnis, is the owner. But as we look into the coffee, I wanted to give him a chance to show you what Breathe is adding to a local scene. Breathe is the compilation, accumulation, the bringing together of, of, I guess, all of the things that I think are possible when we are willing to be intentional about it. You know, I truly believe that Breathe is bringing together of everything that I was prepared to do my whole life and to not be scared of it and to go ahead and start mixing stuff together that most people won't mix together. And, and some of it even when it when I was voicing it or, or moving forward and really what I thought I was called to do kind of sounds silly, but what it comes down to is just we, you talk a lot or I did as a parent in trying to just be nice to people. To be, and then you realize, boy, it's sometimes tough in the middle of class, in the middle of work, in the middle of stress and no sleep, just to be nice to people. And that how often I needed in my life reminders of that truth. And this place was just being intentional with saying, hey, what can we do if we remind each other on a regular basis that we actually can make a difference in each other's lives? I believe we can make a difference in each other's lives, but it means we have to be different because the world doesn't push you that way. And so, so Breathe was about being intentional about what's something as simple as a cup of coffee. That if I actually took the time to say, I'm not gonna take this cup of coffee for granted, what's in it, where it came from, who made it, <laughs> who grew it, who roasted it. If I was gonna not, if I could be intentional about caring about all those parts and then care about the amount of time it was gonna take for somebody to prepare it, actually care about that. To actually then care about what it would take to serve it correctly and do it right in a great manner. If I then would take the time to actually care about the four minutes it would take to prepare it and then the five minutes, 10 minutes that it would take to drink it, that I can do something with that amount of time in my life every day to make a difference. That's basic, simple concept of what this place is, that we could make a difference with coffee by encouraging people to care for each other in that time, which means communicating, which means learning about why the person who produced the coffee cared about it, learning about why the person behind the counter cares about it, and learning from the person you're sitting with uh, why they care about you or you care about them. intended to do, what they're passionate about, um, it makes a difference. 
if, if that's a chef who cares, you taste the difference. If it's a pastor who cares, you hear the difference. If it's somebody behind a counter that actually cares about what they're doing, we, our hearts hear the difference. There are people who are passionate, who love growing coffee. They have families, they build their lives around growing coffee in, in wonderful places of, of our world. They wait for the right exact moment. I mean, I was raised around farmers my whole life. You know there's people who know how to do it right. I don't, they do. So we wanted to partner with people who cared enough to partner with people who knew what they were doing. And so when we went out trying to find a coffee provider, the first thing I had to admit to myself is like, I don't know, I don't know how to roast good coffee. I don't know how to pick good coffee beans, but I know there are people out there who do. I know there are people who are passionate about it, who they were designed to do it. I don't need to act like I'm something I'm not. I just need to find those people. I need to be intentional to find the people that I was supposed to find in that regard. And so when it came to Oddly, we wanted somebody that we could go discuss what the vision of Breathe was, which we could admit to them isn't just about coffee, but we want the coffee to be phenomenal. We want the coffee to be a part of the spirit of what we are, and that it would you could taste the passion in the coffee. You knew somebody who would take care of it. And so, and we wanted, we had kind of debated with different kinds of coffee roasters whether it would be best to, you know, maybe they're better on the coast or not. I do believe that, you know, if taste is, is relative. And so there is a degree to which you can improve coffee, but the people's taste buds have to be capable of, of knowing the difference. So we thought it'd be best that it'd be some, a roaster in the region because we wanted to build connections with people that we could actually see, people we could actually talk to, people we could actually um, encourage. So if somebody's coming down I-70, we could tell them, hey, you could grab a great cup of coffee and further down the road. And so when we found Oddly Correct in Westbourne, Kansas City, and then we heard their story and where they came from, and there was a couple guys who decided because they were so passionate about coffee, they were leaving what they were doing and getting and starting their own shop there in Kansas City. And then I remember the first time we went and visited with them, I talked to Greg, and then we went over and Michael was getting ready for a contest the pouring contest, I believe, but it may have just been on his roasting. But he was doing chemical and taste test analysis on multiple coffees. Um, and I just imagined, I was like, there's no way I'd ever do this. I would taste it and say, well, that tastes good or not, but I would not try to break this down so I knew the chemical makeup of the water was in tune with the chemical breakdown, the temperature was all perfect. And again, it had to be an admission to us to say, well, I'm, I'm not going to be more passionate than these guys are, but we should share what these guys produce. And they, I also remember um, on their bags of coffee, they do prints, and there were a couple of faces of, of people on those bags, and we'd ask them who they were. Several of them were the farmers that produced the beans. So they had a relationship with, and that keyed into me as well. Hey, these guys know the people growing. They go to where they buy the beans, they bring them back at the right time, they roast them, they bring them out of Now we know these guys and we can hand it off to the next, to the people in Hayes who can appreciate and not take for granted their cup of coffee to be intentional with their coffee. I'm, I'm Patrick McGinnis. This is Breathe Coffee House and uh, we're about being intentional with your coffee. I really appreciate how my dad uses coffee to connect the city of Hayes, not only cup by cup, but in a deeper, more meaningful way. And in all honesty, I really could go for one of those pour overs right now, so if someone wants to bring me one. But for real though, a coffee does truly sound amazing. But honestly, the show wouldn't be complete without some live music. So joining me on stage is a local musician legend in my eyes, uh, Max Walker. Oh man! So uh, thank you for joining that, me, Max. Dude. Man, it, it, uh, appreciate that. It, it is very nice having you. It's exciting to see you, man. I haven't seen yeah. you for a while. How you yeah, been? Yeah, it's cool to be here, man. Thanks for thanks for inviting me. I've been been doing pretty good. Yeah, keep been busy. writing. Oh, you know, doing what I doing what I got to do, man. Yeah, you've got to got to make a living do. somehow. Oh yeah. So uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, like where where music's taking you, or um, you know what what got you started in music, kind of thing. Yeah, well I've. I guess I've always been writing, I mean, since I was a kid, you know, I just kind of pull up GarageBand on my iPad and just make a, make a new track every day and all that kind of stuff. Um, I mean, I've just, I've, that's just always 
always been what I've been doing, you know, just always writing music. Um, so I figured might as well try to make a career out of it if that's what I'm going to be doing anyway. So moved out to Nashville, met some people there, kind of learned a business and all that. Um, I kind of like to classify Nashville as like a, it's like a college for musicians in a way, you know. Really? Okay. You, know, you kind of go there and kind of learn the industry and how it all works and all of that. And then you kind of branch out from there and meet people and all the connections, make, you know, network and do all that stuff. So I've just been doing that, you know, I've just been trying to meet people and get my foot in the door as much as I can. You know, lately I've kind of been more focused on writing and just doing all of that. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, just, just keeping with it, you know? So obviously you're not keeping in Nashville right now. Mm -hmm. So uh, was the purpose for coming back to Hayes to kind of focus more so on the writing aspect of yeah, things to kind of get your ground underneath you again? Yeah, man, I kind of I kind of moved back just to be around family during that time because I knew I was just going to be focusing on writing more than all of that other stuff because mm -hmm. um, I got some buddies that I'm going to be meeting up with next year that kind of got this band rolling, you know, so I've kind of just been trying to write for that and focus more on that and just being around family, you know, right. just kind of coming back to my roots here a little bit and um, just kind of doing it that way, you know. Makes sense, man, makes mm -hmm. sense. So uh, so how was Nashville? Like, was Nashville surprising to you? Was it uh, kind of culture shock? Was yeah. it, how did it treat you? How did It was uh, a cool place, you? man. I mean, the city, it's it's got like a small kind of, small town vibe to the city, so it doesn't feel over overwhelming ever. Hmm. Um, but yeah, dude, it's just, Nashville was, it was an experience. That's for sure, met a lot of cool people. I worked with this group called Embassy Music. Um, they kind of train artists and kind of get them ready for the next step and that kind of stuff. So I was, I was an artist with them for a while, went on a couple tours with them. I um, actually did, did some shows here during that tour, the No Rest Midwest right tour. With did that with my buddy Alexander Wren. He's a musician out there now. You guys should definitely look him up. Very talented dude. Um, but yeah, it's really, it's like I said, you, you get your foot in the door that way. You know, right. you, you, you meet people, you meet connections, you network, and it just kind of gets you ready for it, man. It was a heck of an experience, and I, you know, definitely a place I'm going to be going back to. Awesome. All that. yeah. That's exciting. So cool so now that you've been to Nashville and you've, you've been on tour with that uh, Midwest tour, whatever mm -hmm. you were talking about, where is the one place that if you could choose that you could tour to at any point in time or play a show at? Where would that be? You know, really anywhere overseas, man. Really? You know, somewhere somewhere overseas, that's for sure. We got a um, kind of a UK tour starting to get in the works here with that band that I'm going to be joining mm -hmm. up with. So, yeah, just kind of experiencing different cultures is one of the, you know, upsides to doing music. That's for sure. It kind of takes you different places if you're able to, you know, get your foot in the door like that. So, Awesome, man. Um, so I do remember when you came to town that... Uh, Man, that was what four years ago, three, four years ago. Yeah, yeah good night. Man, that's, long, that's been a long, that's a long time. time. Um, I do remember when you came back. You came back with Alex, uh, yeah. Alexander Wren, mm -hmm. and he was he was on American Idol, if I'm correct. He was, dude. Yeah. So, yeah. so he, do you have still there. good still connections with him, or is it? Yeah, uh, we we, we kind of talk every now and then. He's kind of we're both kind of individual artists, I say. Right. I, I would say so. He's kind of more focused on his stuff. I'm focused on mine. And all of that, but we—I mean, we're—we're we're still in contact, you know. Yeah, that's awesome. Man. He's definitely a cool dude. Very talented. He's—he's he he's very talented. I remember, yeah, I that's remember he sure, was dude. pulling out the harmonica and everything. Oh, so, yeah. so I heard you. Uh, I mean, you've kind of touched base a little bit about you have some, you have some buddies uh, that are working on some stuff, and you're you're yeah. thinking about joining a band. So, so the this band, is a big step for you, yes, because yeah, you're dude. you're a solo artist. Or I have been. I've been. been. I've been kind of more of like a singer songwriter artist, you know, like Ed Sheeran. Uh, Jason Mraz, that kind of vibe right. is kind of what I've always always done. But uh, this new band um, that I'm going to be joining up with is more of stuff like uh, Blink-182. Kind of, okay. you know, kind of got a little, a little, more little bit more of a drive in it. Um, yeah, right now, like I said, um, we're going to be trying to figure out a UK tour next year and kind of doing stuff with that. But right now, they're in the Philippines doing some cool stuff. I guess I should mention the band name. <laughs> the name is uh, Squirrels on Mars. Squirrels it's a very on interesting Mars. name, but you should definitely check them out. They got some weird kind of sound and stuff in there, but when I kind of meet up with them, um, yeah, we're just going to be, just keep writing, just yeah. keep uh, making making music. They, The band actually just got signed to a publishing deal, so they're going to be getting paid to make music, and once I kind of join up with them, I'll be writing, you know, with them and doing all that, so. 
So they've they've already formed a band, mm -hmm. and now you're just joining on to add a little bit. Yeah, little bit I mean, we we uh, like I said, we were buddies out in Nashville. You know, we'd write together and go do gigs together and do all that stuff. But as I've been kind of back here writing, I've been talking to them and kind of writing with them, right, and getting the ball rolling with them. So, yeah, that's the plan, man. Yeah. That's very very meet very up and exciting. Just get just get it going. That's crazy, man. Well, uh, we're gonna be right back. So when we do come back, we're going to be able to hear Max Walker play live for us here, uh, right here actually in studio, which is going to be awesome. So we're, we're really excited to hear that. What, uh, what song are you going to be playing for us? It's called Box of Ice. Box of Ice. Interesting so this is, name. So this is one of Max's new singles. So Box of Ice will be coming up when we get back from our break. So stick around, please. <laughs> Welcome back to Live and Local. Sadly, we are coming to a close for tonight's show, so thank you so much for tuning in, and a big thank you to Isaac Hecker and Max Walker for joining us in the studio, and Patrick McGinnis for the interview. Join us again for next week's episode, when Michael will take us to the historical Fort Hayes Museum to explore the Old West. Tonight, we will leave you with some wonderful music of Max Walker. You can catch us every week on TigerMediaNet.com, our Tiger Media Network YouTube channel, Eagle Communications Channel 17, or Next Tech Channel 102. This is Andrew McGinnis with your Live and Local, and we will see you next time. Take it away, Max. She said, I might rip your heart out, but I bought a box of ice. Guy, a bloody face your family doesn't recognize. She's brought up passing time in the city. She's brought down by a reoccurring feeling. It's reoccurring as she pumps us synthetic and says it's fake love, real drugs. I'm apathetic. I'm apathetic every time you go. Cause you're apathetic when you're on the phone. But if you want it, then you got it. All you gotta do is say hi. Got me, but you gotta keep me staying high. And if you want it, then you got it. All you gotta do is say hi. And if you want it, then you got me, but you gotta keep me staying high, staying high, staying high. Oh, oh, oh. Everybody likes to preach things they think they know And everybody talks as if they've got a halo That's not to say that you've got it all your damn self Baby, what in the hell I put you on a high show You're apathetic now, don't wanna lead me on you apathetic since you're already gone If you want it, then you got it All you gotta do is say hi Hey, if you want me, then you got me But you gotta keep me staying high 